This video is going to cover the topic of perimeter and area of triangles. Be sure the date and topic are at the top of your page. The essential question that will guide this video is what measurements do we need to find the perimeter and area of a triangle? Today we explored finding the area and perimeter of triangles, so I'm just going to take a quick minute to recap some of the important information. We'll start with perimeter. Of course, perimeter is the distance around a shape. So just like we did when we found the perimeter of a rectangle, we need to total the lengths of each side. For triangles, that looks like perimeter equals side plus side plus side. So if we had this triangle, we could find the perimeter by adding all the sides. Straightforward enough, right? Something that carries on from what we've done with other shapes, just adding up the sides. We've worked a bit with finding areas of triangles as well, and we saw in class there's a connection with triangles and rectangles. If I have this triangle and I draw the rectangle around it, I can see the area or the space it takes is half of the rectangle, right? It's one half of the rectangle. Since we find the area of a rectangle by multiplying the base times the height, I can do that for the triangle, but then cut it in half or divide it by two to figure out how much is just the triangle's area. So for example, in this case, I would do four times three, which is 12, and then divide that by two, which means the area is six square units. You will see this written commonly two different ways, and it's important that you know both of these ways that you might see this. You might see it as I've written it before. Area is the base times the height divided by two. But you also might see it as the area is one half times the base times the height. Both of these are going to be um, just as easy to use, right? You can just decide which one works best for you. They'll both get you the same result in the end. Something that's very important to know, however, is that the base and the height are sometimes hidden in a triangle. Sometimes the height is inside a triangle. Wherever the base and height are, what's important is that they must meet at a right angle. That means that when they meet, they must meet in this L shape, right? This is our right angle. It's 90 degrees, so they have to meet in a corner like that. So sometimes we have to search for a minute to find it, but once we've found the base and the height, we can use the same strategy or formula to calculate the area. I'll show you an example. Here I have a triangle, and the sides are all labeled, which would make it really easy if I was looking for the perimeter. However, here I want to find the area, and I don't see any lines hmm, where the triangle is meeting at a right angle. But it looks like my eight is my base, right? That's what it's sitting on. So if I'm looking for the right angle, I kind of imagine walking up to the top of the triangle at the very tip top and dropping a string straight down. Gravity will bring it straight down. And there, all of a sudden, I have a right angle. This is actually the height of my triangle which means the height of my triangle, if I count these spaces, is five units. Now that I have my base of eight and my height of five, I can go ahead and do my normal calculation for area, right? So eight times five would be 40, but then I have to divide that by two. So the area here is 20 units squared. These extra numbers here, while they would be useful if I was finding perimeter, actually have nothing to do with finding the area because they are neither the base nor the height. Here's another funny example. I have a triangle, I have all my sides labeled, but again, if I wanna find the area, I need the base and the height, and they have to meet at a right angle. I don't see any of these lines meeting at a right angle like that, but I do see that two appears to be my base, it's what it's sitting on. So if I went up to the top of this triangle, right up here, and dropped a piece of string, maybe with a penny on it, 
it would make a line like this. That's my height. So my height is actually one, two, three, four, five units. I now know that my base is two and my height is five, so I can proceed with finding my area. I would first need to multiply my two by five. I would then know that it's a triangle, so I have to cut it in half, divide it by two, and I would find that my area is five square units, or five units squared. Again, this six and this five, or excuse me, this six and this eight, while useful for finding perimeter, has nothing to do with finding the area because they are neither, neither of those are the height nor are they the base. Remember the essential question for this video was what measurements do we need to calculate the perimeter and the area of a triangle? And we saw for a perimeter, we need all three of the sides. To find the area, however, we need to know the base and the height of the triangle. And we need to recognize that the base and the height of a triangle are always the two lines, wherever they are, that meet in a right angle in a corner. We'll practice more of this together in class. Feel free to review this as many times as you need and ask any questions that you might have tomorrow.